If you go on my Facebook page, you will see an old photo, sort of circa 1964, of little Markham sitting on his grandfather's knee driving a tractor. And even though I'm not a farm boy, my uh, grand, my family comes from farming stock, and I've spent a few little while, uh, you know, on the fields and on the uh, the farm roads uh, driving a tractor. And so when I heard that there's a company in California that has made an electric tractor, well, I'm very interested in that. And I'm going to talk to Mark Schwager, who uh, with uh, Monarch Tractor about his invention. So welcome to the interview, Mark. Thank you very much, and and thank you for having me on the show. Well, a real pleasure because I'm very interested in this. I mean, we've seen we're seeing uh, the electrification of cars and trucks and freight and buses and all sorts of things. And I wondered when uh, electric vehicles would come to the farm. So, uh, you know, tell us about your invention. Yeah. So, Monarch is making an all-electric driver optional tractor with incredible amounts of data collection capabilities which we can build into a digital interface to make farmers farm better. Um, so this, this tractor would be considered a compact tractor, but it punches well above its weight in terms of it, it, its capabilities. And we think about the tractor as a zero compromise tractor. It has to do everything that a traditional tractor does and a whole lot more. And so we've given it those capabilities. Um, the architecture of the tractor is completely by wire so we can enable automation and that automation is controlled by sensors that are used for uh, a huge amount of data collection which can be applied to the agronomy of the farm and so we can bridge these three three things together electrification automation and data collection on a single vehicle now that's really interesting. Uh, I have uh, some relatives in the family who are still farming and, and they talk about uh, automated seeders, for example. You just set them up and with a satellite, I presume, and, and uh, no person needs, nobody needs to be driving it and the way it goes and, and, and seeds your field. Is that the kind of what we're talking about here? Yeah, we can absolutely do those sort of operations, but where we're focused on is actually even more challenging than a flat field where there's no obstacles and you follow a GPS line. Where we're operating is in vineyards and orchards where you have permacrops that you actually have to manipulate vertically or be able to manipulate based on what is observed around the tractor for utilizing any of those implements. And so we wanna make sure that um, we architect the vehicle with the ability to uh, control all of those manipulation points. So it can do all of those things uh, with an automated seeder, um, just like you were referencing, but it can also do a lot more with any existing implement. Well, well tell me about some of the things it can do. I mean, uh, for those of us who, who uh, aren't quite sure what architecting things means, uh, give us some just practical examples out in the field of what the tractor can do. Absolutely. So uh, like I said, it's everything an existing tractor can do. So it can do spraying, mowing, hauling, tilling. Um, it can work with any existing implement because we, we know that it has to fit inside the farmer's ecosystem. What we can't do is parachute solutions in that farmers don't know how to use or won't be able to service, which is why we made it a tractor. We want the existing ecosystem to be able to be comfortable with the product. That's why it has a seat and a steering wheel, so you can go out and drive it and train it. Um, so it can work with any existing implement because we've given it that hydraulic capability that you find on traditional tractors. What we did was make that hydraulic capability by wire controllable so that it can be automated. Um, but the important thing is existing infrastructure, existing implements, existing drivers, all can use the tractor. And then that tractor can be trained. Um, it can perform it can perform operations automated and then save the, the, the farmer a lot of money in doing so, both from an electrification and diesel displacement standpoint and from an automation standpoint. And it isn't about eliminating jobs. It's about elevating jobs and turning tractor drivers into fleet managers. And we've seen this in manufacturing for a long time. People don't assemble, people don't assemble things in, in America very much anymore. A lot of machines do it. Um, what people do in factories today is they keep, keep equipment running. And that's the way we see the farm going in the future. Well, tell me about how you develop this tractor, because I understand that you have a, a background in electric vehicles as well. 
So the genesis of this was all the way back in 2014 and actually precedes uh, my involvement in the company. So my two co-founders, uh, Praveen and Zachary, started working on electrification in, in farm vehicles uh, with a USAID grant in, in 2014-2015. So uh, after that initial prototypes were built in 2016 and then deployed in an Indian village uh, for the Powering Global Agriculture Challenge that they um, won and won that grant for. Um, and they learned a lot about that tractor. Uh, they learned um, that the tractor that they um, first put in that village was too small. It, it didn't have enough power. It didn't have enough runtime. And they also learned a lot about how important the driver is and how complicated of a task it is. Tractors are not easy to drive and easy to um, essentially use for farming. There's a lot of different things that that tractor driver has to pay attention to, most importantly, the implement behind the tractor that is actually doing the work. The tractor is really a navigation and a, and a, and a power platform. Uh, the implement is the most important thing as part of that system together, actually adding value to the farm. And so essentially what you're doing is you're controlling the implement, driving forward and looking behind you. So it's a very, very challenging thing to do. And learning about how important the driver was, was transformational for the company. Now, I've seen uh, photos of your tractor and uh, it looks fairly sophisticated. Is this something, do you buy the tractor and then modify it or do you manufacture everything, you know, soup to nuts in your factory? So it's, it's a good question. It's an important piece of our strategy. Um, our goal is to be innovative at the product level, uh, but we are not a retrofit company. What that means is we're using existing components from the automotive industry, and we have the electrification of, of light vehicles to thank for the availability of these components. So we've harmonized our specifications to work with automotive voltage levels and automotive components. That way we can buy things that are already at competitive cost and apply them directly to our vehicle. It's the same thing with the tractor ecosystem. We're buying certain components like axles that we don't need to develop from the ground up because they're already at very competitive cost and they can be applied directly to our vehicle. So we're picking pieces from each industry to, um, to create this tractor and then bringing them all together at the product level. The important thing is that compact tractors are typically very, very mechanical pieces of equipment, which means that you have mechanical linkages between everything. What we've done is made all of that by wire, and it's much more complicated than a light vehicle being um, automatable and by wire. Light vehicles have by wire steering, braking, and propulsion. We add shifting, hydraulics, PTO control, hitch control, and uh, any sort of implement control externally. So it's a lot more complicated of a vehicle in terms of its architecture. The way that it's actually used is much simpler than an existing tractor because there are no mechanical linkages and we can build guardrails around that driver to make sure that they don't do anything unsafe while they're on the vehicle. Well, that, that's very interesting. So where are you uh, price wise? Are you competitive with the existing uh, gas powered tractors? We are competitive. Um, you see, you do see a huge range in our tractor class between highly specialized tractors with a lot of customizations that have a price tag that's much higher than ours, as well as the most simple tractors that have a, a price tag that's lower than ours. So we're kind of right in the middle there. I would say the most simple diesel tractor is probably about $35,000 in our class. We're at $58,000, but tractors regularly go over $100,000 in our class, depending on what is specified and what is customized on them. And what's been the experience so far from your customers? I assume you're getting some feedback and uh, are they pleased with the technology? Absolutely. They're really, really excited about it. They're, they're really asking, when can we get this tractor? And um, how soon will it be before we can start really working with, with, with this in the field, both for the electrification from meeting their sustainability goals, as well as the automation to help with their economic goals. So what are your um, what 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 are your plans for the next two to five years, uh, Mark? Kind of sketch us out where uh, where you're going with this. So next year is going to be a really big year for us. We're going to start those um, those industry sales, uh, begin working with farmers in a number of, uh, of verticals. One of them being you know vineyards, orchards, blueberry farms, um, even solar farms are, are part of that roadmap. And so. Um, 
the important thing is that um, we complete everything that we need to do to make this tractor uh, saleable and robust and uh, um, you know bulletproof for, for our customers. And then we start producing them at extremely high quality, delivering them to, to the farmers and making sure that the farmers are successful in deploying their technologies. What we wanna make sure of that we don't just drop something off and they use it just like they've used their existing tractor. We wanna make sure that they go through that evolution and really start to use all of the technologies uh, to make them more profitable. Well, very interesting. Good luck with your company, Mark. And thank you very much for your insights. Thank you very much.